I introduce Dr. O'Brien from the Community Academy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Community Academy of Philadelphia. We're a charter school and now a community mass vaccination clinic. I'm the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Alberta O'Brien. I want to thank, first of all, some of our distinguished guests here today for coming out, Mayor Jim Kenney, our Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez, and Dr. Thomas Farley from uh, the Health Commissioner. We are very excited at the partnership with the city and the Public Health Department. Community, we have it in our name because we definitely believe in it. We're a community-based school and being a partner to the nearby underserved communities is very important to us. We wanted to do this to give back to the families in the area and we felt that it, our, it was our duty and our honor to share our space with them. We're very much aware of the suffering in this area and the surrounding neighborhoods to the school due to much loss and trauma. We appreciate the access that these families will get and we're comforted that the city and the health department saw the need for it. Let's face it, many older citizens in Philadelphia are afraid to go outside of their comfort zone and head to Center City. So, when this was first announced, we received emails, phone calls right away from the surrounding neighborhoods. They were saying things like, I'm age appropriate, I live within walking distance, how do I sign up? And I'm very proud of the members of the CAP staff who were very excited to help and point people in the right direction. These vaccines are so important to the community. Access to them is imperative to get our families back together safely, get all students in school without fear, and start the healing process. Thank you to the City of Philadelphia, Mayor Kenny and Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez, and Dr. Farley of the Philadelphia Public Health Department for making this happen. And now, the 99th Mayor of Philadelphia, Mayor Jim Kenny. Thank you, Doctor, and uh, I'm the 99th mayor. I feel 99 years old, so thank you this year. So good morning, everyone, and first I'd like to thank the Health Department, Dr. O'Brien, uh, uh, Councilwoman Sanchez, and the Community Academy of Philadelphia Charter for helping make this partnership happen. Getting the vaccine out to those at the highest risk is a top priority of our city, and we believe this clinic is a big step in helping to provide easier access to vaccines to the residents of this surrounding community. We're building a robust network of vaccine distribution sites, ranging from community-based clinics to this, to hot, to, like this, to hospitals, pharmacies, and neighbor health centers, mobile operations, and even a mass clinic with FEMA at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. I'm pleased that more than 100 sites are currently approved to administer the vaccine. I also want to acknowledge the folks involved in standing up the clinic that the Parks and Recreation, that the Parks and Recreation and Health Department held on Tuesday at the MLK Center in North Philadelphia. By all accounts, it was a very successful day, and I'm happy that this was happening here in Harrogate as well. As we get more vaccines, we can hold more clinics, get more folks vaccinated, and get back to some sense of normalcy. Before I turn it over to Dr. Farley, I just want to emphasize, black and brown communities in our city have been underserved and are affected by this, by this virus more than any other communities. They die at higher rates, they're more infected at higher rates. We have to get into these communities to get people vaccinated. People are afraid, they're stressed, everybody's stressed, we've been stressed since March, since a year ago. Uh, and I believe now, I really feel that all of us are now rowing in the same direction, getting as more people vaccinated every day, standing up more sites, getting more vaccines distributed. The great news of Johnson & Johnson uh, with this one-shot vaccine that's coming hopefully next week will really propel us forward and we're looking forward to everyone getting safe, healthy, and back to, uh, back to normal. So thank you very much. <coughs> Dr. Farley. Thank you very much. I, I first want to uh, thank uh, Dr. O'Brien for uh, letting us into this beautiful facility. It really is fabulous. Uh, and then I want to um, give you a sense of where this fits into our overall plan for vaccination across the city. Uh, for those of you who haven't been you know, understanding of how that, the pieces fit together. So we're off offering vaccines through hospitals, through federally qualified health centers and other clinics, 
through pharmacies, uh, through employers, directly to their employees who are uh, frontline essential workers, such as police and fire, uh, through dialysis centers and some other specialized medical facilities, through community pro providers like the Black Doctors COVID Consortium, um, as well as clinics like this. This is a mass clinic. Uh, we have actually been running mass clinics like this for weeks, but most people haven't been aware of that because they've been uh, really just for healthcare workers. But what's new this week is we're running mass clinics like this for people who are not uh, uh, eligible because of their employment, but because they are elderly or because they have medical conditions that put them at greater risk for serious infection. Uh, the people who are invited here today are the people who went to the, health, the government's website and signed up under our vaccine interest database. Uh, we knew we had many people who wanted to be vaccinated in the past. We only had so many uh, slots available. The demand was much greater than the need, and so we said sign up, and those opportunities become available for vaccination, we will contact you. So that's what we did. We contacted people last week for all the clinics this week and gave them the option of which one of these they wanted to sign up for. So these are all people from the Vaccine Interest Database. Uh, this, again, is the second in a series this week. Uh, on Tuesday, we were at the Martin Luther King Older Adult Center in North Philly. On Saturday, we're going to be West Philly at the University of the Sciences. We're going to be back here every week or every two weeks for first doses. Uh, and then we'll be back here three weeks from now to give the people who are being vaccinated today their second doses. These clinics are in Philadelphia's neighborhoods. They are a complement to the FEMA large site that's going to be in Center City that is going to start next week. And we're going to continue to do these as long as is necessary, as long as there's as a demand for it. Today, if you go in there, there are 12 different stations. Each station is manned by a nurse uh, who can, can vaccinate people. There's many other support staff there as well. Um, the, uh, we hope to vaccinate 400 people here today. Uh, I wish we could vaccinate everybody in the city of Philadelphia today. We can. But we will vaccinate 400 people, and then we'll be 400 people closer to ending the epidemic. Thanks very much for coming out again, and I want to turn it over to Councilmember Quinona Sanchez. Thank you, Dr. Farley. Thank you to the mayor um, for uh, picking Community Academy. I just want to take a moment and, and thank uh, Principal Peretta uh, for this for opening up this space. I was a board member here prior to getting elected. Um, they were one of the first charter schools, and from the very beginning, her father looked at this space and what we were doing here as not just a school, but really a community center, and I know he would be proud of the work that is going on today, but thank you to the Peretta family and to the whole team here at, at Community Academy. To the mayor and to Dr. Farley, um, I want to thank them. They're, as you all know, we have been working um, together to try to get an aggressive plan into the neighborhoods. This is a step in that right direction, and I really want to thank them. Latinos only represent 4% of those vaccinated over the next few weeks with the help of this center and our other providers in the community, Esperanza Health, Maria de los Santos, Temple, and Einstein. We hope to improve the access that, that um, uh, the Hispanic community is having to vaccinations. And so uh, to the Juniata community and the North Philadelphia community, I just want you folks to know that we hear you. Um, we're working through the stigma, and I think the work that will be conducted here today gets us one step closer, making people feel comfortable that not only do we have a plan, but that we are aggressively going to make sure that black and brown communities ha have access, essential workers. When we get, as we work through 1A and 1B, when we get to 1C, that represents a large constituency in the 7th Councilmatic District, and I, am, I pledge to work with the Health Commissioner and the Health Department and all of our partners to make sure that those essential workers who have been waiting and every day showing up to work have the access that, that they deserve. Thank you all very much. Buenos días. Estos son los comentarios de la doctora Alberta O'Brien, la directora de la Academia Comunitaria de Filadelfia, la Escuela Charter y la Clínica Comunitaria de Vacunación Masiva. Buenos días y bienvenidos. Me gustaría dar las gracias a algunos, algunas de, las, de nuestros distinguidos invitados por venir hoy. El alcalde Jim Kenney, el Comisionado de Salud, Dr. Thomas Farley, y la concejal María Quiñones Sánchez, y por supuesto, la prensa. 
Estamos muy entusiasmados con la asociación con el Departamento de Salud Pública de la comunidad. Los tenemos a nuestros nombres porque creemos en ella. Somos una escuela basada en la comunidad y ser socio de las comunidades desatendidas cercanas es importante para nosotros. Queríamos hacer esto para re, 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 recomponer a las familias de la comunidad y sentimos que era nuestro deber y nuestro honor compartir nuestro espacio con ellas. Estamos muy conscientes del sufrimiento en esta área y en los barrios cercanos a la escuela debido a COVID. Ha habido mucha pérdida y trauma y agradecemos el acceso que tendrán esas familias y nos, y nos consuela que el Departamento de la Salud de la ciudad y también que también viera esta neces la necesidad. Cuando, estos, cuando esto se anunció por primera vez, recibimos correos electrónicos y llamadas telefónicas de los, vecindar, de los vecindarios diciendo cosas como que soy apropiado para, para, para por la edad y vivo en una corta distancia a pie, de, a pie de la escuela, ¿cómo me inscribo? Los miembros del personal estaban emocionados de ser útiles y ponerlos en la dirección correcta. Estas vacunas son importantes para la comunidad y el acceso a ellas es imperativo para reunir a las familias de nuevo a formar segura, reunir a todos los estudiantes en las escuelas sin miedo e iniciar el proceso de curación. Gracias a la ciudad de Filadelfia, al alcalde Kenny, y, al, y la concejal María Quiñones Sánchez y al doctor Farley del Departamento de Salud Pública de Filadelfia por, por hacer esto tan exitoso. Y ahora los comentarios del alcalde Kenny. Buenos días a todos. En primer lugar, me gustaría dar las gracias al Departamento de Salud, al do, a la doctora O'Brien y a, la, y a la, la Escuela Charter de la Academia Comunitaria de Filadelfia por ayudar a que esta asociación sea exitosa. La distribución de la vacuna a las personas con mayor riesgo es una prioridad de la ciudad y creemos que esta clínica es, una, es un gran paso para ayudar a proporcionar un acceso más fácil a la vacuna y a los residentes de la, de la comunidad cercana. Estamos construyendo una sólida red de sitios de distribución de vacunas que van desde clínicas comunitarias como esta hasta hospitales, farmacias, centros de salud del vecindario y operaciones móviles, incluso, incluso la clínica de masas con FEMA en, este, en el centro de convenciones. Me complace que más de 100 sitios estén actualmente aprobados para administrar la vacuna. También quiero reconocer a las personas involucradas en poner de pie la clínica que, nos, que los, los parques de recreación y el Departamento de Salud celebran en este, el martes en el, en el Centro de Envejecientes de Martin Luther King. Según todos los informes, fue un día exitoso y estoy feliz de que esto siga sucediendo en Harrogate también. A medida que recibimos más vacunas, podemos mantener más clínicas, vacunar a la gente y volver a una, a un, a una a normalidad. We have not had any adverse effects from the vaccine in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, and for that matter, in the nation as a whole, uh, there have been some people with allergic reactions, but nobody's had any permanent damage from this vaccine. It's an extremely safe vaccine.
I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? It seems like the vaccination campaign is ramping up. I mean, do you see that soon? Do you see us hammering that second meter now? Uh, absolutely, the campaign is ramping up. We're getting more doses. We're expanding the number of places where the vaccine is offered. Uh, and that's only going to help us. Until now, I would say we have not vaccinated enough people to change the course of the epidemic, but soon we will be. We're getting our systems down, and I would like that to rise. We, our target is to get up to 500 people per day, uh, and I think in a site like that we can get there, but this is our first time, so we were a little more cautious today. Is there any problem getting the vaccination? We have enough doses to be able to handle these, no problem. Yes? So uh, anybody can sign up at our vaccine interest database, which is on our website, and that's in Spanish as well as in English and other languages as well. If people don't have internet access, they can call 311, and we will put them in the database, and we can handle uh, people if they're Spanish-speaking only if they call 311 for that. Is there a message in Spanish one to be available to? Because when you call the 311, 311, you get a message in English, and it's hard for some people who don't speak Spanish. Let me, Jim, you want to give detail. If someone calls 311, and they don't speak English at all, is there, can they get through to someone that can then help them with the yes, data? So they call 301 and just uh, whoever picks up the phone to start speaking to Spanish and they'll route them to someone who can help them. Okay. Uh, I'll just hold this okay. Um, I, I, understood, I, I understood that the assistant department was recording something in Spanish. Do you put it in place of people called in? Right, that's for the help department. Three one one does have language access. Let me. I I haven't called three one one lately, so let me check it out and try to get back to you. Yeah, we had a bumpy road, and I think what we're here doing here today really is to change kind of the trajectory of how people were feeling. We could not do this without our partners, and that's why it was so critical uh, that the health department collaborated with Esperanza Health, Maria de los Santos, Temple, and Einstein, because that's where people's primary doctors are, and that's who people trust. And I think what you, you're seeing now, as the, the city gets more vaccinations, you know, we're going to have to oversupply some of these centers, help them build their capacity so that they can get their patients. People are going to go who, to who they trust, right? They're not going to go to downtown. Uh, I spent three hours at the Lear Core Center, and we had to bus people in to feel comfortable to going to the Lear Core Center. So this is what we have to do in communities like the Hispanic community. Uh, and I would say to folks, call your primary doctor, work through your primary doctor, and who you know. But we have to do this, and we, we're going to have to do this more aggressively. As I said, when we get to 1C and essential workers, you're going to see a lot of our members of the community who are out there working every day severely exposed. And so one is just breaking the stigma. Two is just getting access. And until the change in federal administrations, from the Trump administration to Biden-Harris, we didn't know what we were getting. So for us to set up multiple sites and not have the vaccine available would have set people up to be disappointed, have to wait in line, run out of vaccine, and then leave. Now that we have a steady stream of vaccine coming in, and it's dependable, and we're working with FEMA, who have been just absolutely wonderful uh, on what they're doing, uh, we have the supply necessary. Uh, the other issue was just trying to find sites like this, and I think the more we get into the community, the more people are comfortable. And you would act like what you had asked what the city was doing to try to reach these folks. This is it. This is one of the big ones. So that people feel comfortable coming here for all kinds of reasons. I was talking to the doctor about the, the lunch program that they have here. People are used to coming here uh, and they feel comfortable and confident here. So I think we'll, we'll get there. 
But the main problem for the very beginning was the availability, availability of vaccine, which we didn't have. Yeah. Okay, I'll okay. talk. No, I, I, and I think to, to the mayor's point and to Dr. Farley, because it's a, been a very public conversation we've had in council, we're going to need to have open sites available eventually. And when we have more predictability about the vaccinations coming in, I think you're going to see that walk-up capability uh, has to be built out. Because ultimately, our folks, again, they need transportation. They need to feel comfortable where they're going. So I agree with you. So I don't think it's an either or. I think it's an and and an and and an and. And as the vaccination count uh, rises, I think we're like the 35,000 a week, as that number rises, and if we're going to get to the July goal of vaccinating everyone, I think you're gonna, we're going to need to do all of that and some more um, for folks. And the other issue is, is this, the, the impact of the one-shot availability with the Johnson & Johnson is going to just double our pace. So you don't have to come back a second time. You get it once and you're done. And that's really a big, big game changer. Yes. Uh, look, I mean, the Black Doctors Consortium did a walk-in 24-hour, and it, and it vaccinated 4,000 people, which is um, uh, tremendous. But there were some fits and starts when it came to, you know, the people waiting in line. And that was some, uh, there are things we learn as we go. There's no playbook for this pandemic. I mean, everybody was around in 1918, 19 or dead. Uh, so it really had no, no one to consult with. So, um, and, and, and the, the Leah Chorus Center one, the walk-up, there, there were three components of it. 75 and over went to an express line. They got in the building. Those with a reservation moved quicker. Those who came just walked up, had to wait. Uh, so we're learning from that as we go. So when we do the walk-ins in this neighborhood and others, we'll know what mistakes we've made. So those are the facilities you guys are analyzing? Yes, absolutely. Yep. It's okay, it's your job. <laughs> I mean, Councilwoman Quinones' office has a great staff to do constituent work. They can, they'll find a way to get it done. Uh, there are other elected officials on the state level uh, that can, can help get it done. So it's all, it's time for all, of, it's been, it's time now, and we've been doing it, for all of us to work together on every level of government uh, to serve people in a constituent service way. Thank you. Again, they know how much I advocate around this stuff. We have to overcompensate in this area because our numbers and our communities were underrepresented in 1A and 1B. And when we get to that 1C, we absolutely have to do a lot more. Forgive me if this is where I'm going to Can you just tell Philadelphia for seeing community service and how they can get a point? Because I think a lot of people are All right, so, so right now, if people, uh, the first place they should go is their own doctor to see if their doctor has vaccine, and many doctors do. But if they don't have a way of getting vaccinated, then they should get their name in our vaccine interest database, and then we invite people to these clinics, and then they sign up for an appointment. We invite them by email, we also invite them by telephone. Over time, as we get more vaccine available and the demand is a little closer, we will be having walk-up services. Uh, but right now, we don't necessarily want to have a line all the way down the block when we can only handle so many people. We're going to get there. But that right now, instructions get into that vaccine interest database. Anybody can sign you up. You don't need to sign up yourself. You can have a friend, a colleague, a church member sign you up. And then we will contact you when the, an opportunity arises. And, or, anybody can sign up, whether there's in their categories or not. And then we'll select those people based on that eligibility. All right, and they can they can also call three one one, and we will sign you up in that database. I mean, when I, I did, I signed myself up a while ago. Walked through, walked through the process. Clicked on, clicked on. They accepted it. They said, "We'll we'll contact you," and I'm waiting to be contacted. So.
So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, based on the study that came out yesterday, is an excellent vaccine. I would be more than happy to get the vaccine uh, when it becomes available. Uh, so I would recommend people get whatever vaccine is the first one available to them. Any organization can do that. They can sign up people for them to, to assist them, especially people who uh, may have limited English proficiency. Uh, I'm, I don't know how many organizations are doing it. I know there are a number of organizations are doing that, but any organization in the city can do that. They can go on their database and sign up anybody.